Hi, and welcome to our very first um, station. This is finding areas of irregular shapes. In this station, you are going to be looking at three different methods to be able to figure out various areas of um, some shapes other than like triangles and rectangles and trapezoids and that sort of thing. So let's get started. Our very first method that we're going to be looking at is counting full squares. We've talked about all of these methods in class, but counting full squares is one of those methods that we talked about. And a few of the pros that it works with is it works with simpler shapes, so shapes that are not as extreme. So in other words, when you're looking for simpler shapes, you want to be able to recognize um, squares and rectangles and half units. If you can't recognize those all right away, then the shapes are a little bit too extreme and we'll look at some that are a little bit more extreme. Some shapes look really simple, but in all reality, they're not as simple as they may seem. For example, we had one in our homework that looks something like the Star Trek symbol, um, like the pin that the Star Trek people wore. And this is actually a more difficult shape because it spans, or when you look at it, it spans more dots than anticipated. And because of that, it makes things a little bit harder. Um, and so even though a lot of people said, or can say that this is a third of a square or something like that, unfortunately, we're not able to make that assumption because of how it's shaped and where it is on the coordinate grid. So instead it's important to look and look for and be able to recognize only squares, rectangles, and half units. In other words, perfect half units. Some cons to this can be is it can be inaccurate for shapes that have partial squares. So like if it's any different than like just a half a unit, then it can be really cumbersome and it's not necessarily the best method because then you become um, you're guessing as to how big the squares are, and that's not the point. We need to be able to be accurate with this. So this is a shape that we can say is easily usable with this, easily doable with this method. Um, for example, we need to be able to find squares, rectangles, and half units. Nothing less than that. So when I look at this, I see straight up right here, there are four squares, one, two, three, four, that I can find. As well, we have another square hanging off here. You may have seen this as a rectangle and another rectangle. Doesn't quite matter in all reality, just that we see that there are partials, uh, there are full squares or full rectangles there. As well, I also see that I have a half a unit, another half of a unit, one here, one here, one here, here, and here. Because of that, we can say that each one of these half units, if we put two of them together, we have a full unit. Here's another two put together, another full unit, and another full unit here, and then we still have a half a unit left over. So we have five squares or rectangles, depending on how you looked at it, and then three and a half partial units, which means we have a total of eight and a half units squared for this particular shape. Let's go on and look at another sort of shape that we can dissect and another, another method. Here's another method that we can look at. We can break up the shape into more recognizable shapes. So it's similar to what we just did, but it also takes into account that you can make more complex triangles out of it. So our accuracy can be increased, but we must connect the dots within the shape only. That means we cannot go outside of the shape to connect any dots. And we have to know some area equations. So we'll go over those when we look at this next shape. Looking at this next shape, we probably can break it up into pretty easy rectangles or squares and triangles. So we'll do just that. And I'm just going to connect dots. And if you notice, I'm only connecting dots that are either on the line or within the shape. And that's really important to pay attention to. I'm going to connect there. I'm going to connect these four dots right here. I'm going to connect these two and these two. 
By doing that, I am creating rectangles, squares, and actually I'm going to cut this off and make another rectangle and a couple of triangles and some triangles. So if we look at that, we can think of area equations. Area equations of squares is side length times side length or side length squared, either of the two. Area equation of a rectangle is base times height. And area equation for a triangle is base times height divided by 2. Looking at this particular situation, let's look at just the squares. We have one square. It is a 1 by 1. So 1 times 1 equals 1 unit squared. Let's look now at our rectangles. We have 1, 1 by 4 rectangle, 1 by 4 which is equal to 4 units squared. We have a 1 by 2. That's 2 units squared. And now we have to look at our triangles. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 half unit rectangles. And we know they're half unit, rect or half unit triangles. We know each of those are half of a square. So we can say there's 2 units squared just in those. Now I also see a triangle that is a 1 by 2. It's a base of 1 and a height of 2 and I divide that by 2 and I get 1 unit squared. And I also have another triangle that it's flipped upside down but it has a base of 2 and a height of 1 and I'm going to divide that by 2 and I get another unit squared. So adding all of this up we can say we have 1 unit plus 4 units equals 5 plus 2 is 7 plus 2 more is 9, plus 1 more is 10, and 1 more is 11. So the area of this shape is 11 units squared. Our very last method that we're going to look at is not just breaking up the shapes or anything, but we are going to look at something a little bit more complex, but it requires us to look beyond the shape. So we're going to use the box it method. Boxing the shape allows us to be super accurate with more complex shapes, but its cons are it has more steps than the other two, and we still need those area equations. So let's look at what the box it method makes us do. So here is our shape, <coughs> tricky little shape, excuse me, a tricky little shape, and the box it method essentially tells us that we need to create the smallest box we possibly can around this shape. The box can be either square or rectangle. It looks like this one's gonna be a rectangle. And after that, we need to figure out the area of that particular box. And we are going to be subtracting away all of these other parts that are around it. All of these pieces. So this bigger box is a 3 by 5. It looks like 1, 2, 3, oh, 4, sorry. 3 by 4 box. So the area of the big box is 3 times 4, which is 12 units squared. And we are going to be subtracting away all these other pieces. And what we notice with these other pieces is they're typically triangles or they're rectangles or squares that we can take away. So I see a 1 by 1, 2, 3, a 1 by 3 triangle. 1 times 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5. I also see a 1 by 2. 2 triangle, 1 times 2 divided by 2 equals 1. Another 1, 2, 3, th another 1 by 3 triangle, so 1.5 units. A small half triangle, so I'm just going to say 0 0.5. And a another 1 by 2 triangle. So total, what we are going to be cutting away from this area is a one and a half, two and a half, four, four and a half, and five and a half. We're going to be taking five and a half away from 12 units. So our bigger rectangle minus all of our little triangles, 5.5, ends up getting us 6.5 units squared for our area. This is a method that will work with any shape. Each and every time. Last but not least, we're going to look at one last and one last shape, and we're going to break it up using sort of a combination of all of our methods. So, looking at this, I can see that I have a 
couple of rectangles, one rectangle there, and actually I just have one rectangle. So I have a one by three rectangle, so that's three units. As well, I can see that I have a half a unit. And then from there, I need to break up my shape or I could potentially use the box it method to figure out some of these other shapes. So, so I am going to use the box it method around this area right here because I see there is a rectangle here. I have a triangle that is a one by three. So that's one and a half units. And I have a triangle here that's a two by two or two units squared and everything else around it it is a perfect square so that big perfect square this bigger square that we have around the shape is a three by three or nine units so I could say nine minus two four five and a half which is going to be equal to three point five for this blue space in here so this blue space is three point five this last little triangle I can just simply use our area equation on it. It's a one by one triangle. So that means one times one divided by two equals 0 0.5. So this triangle is 0 0.5 as well. So now I just need to add up all these different spaces. I have my initial rectangle, that three. I used this other triangle, 0 0.5. We also have this blue funky shape, which was 3.5 squared units. And we have our last triangle, which was 0 0.5. So our total area, 3 plus 0.5 equals 3.5 plus another 3.5 is 7 plus another half is 7.5 units squared. I'd like you to work yourself through this station, find some more areas of irregular shapes, and if you have any questions, make sure you're asking. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.